All right, welcome back, True Seeker. This video I'm going to do, again, the reason I'm doing it is just because it's a reminder that a lot of us in this world, we have similar problems, and we're not alone, and we have lifelong struggles that we're trying to overcome that seem sometimes impossible. And, you know, an ongoing conflict I've talked about in my life is the one with my mother. Just her and I could not get along. And, you know, you start blaming people. You never get to the uh, the solution. But something that is true about my mother is she, she really does live for conflict and confrontation. And I it's just, it's obvious how when she's around certain people, she knows how to push their buttons. And it seems like she just always wants the conflict. So something has been going on in my life for... You know, the last four years, it seems like it's been a consistent problem. I just asked my mom if she can call me in the afternoon because I'm always grinding in the morning. And uh, this morning I had an unexpected errand. I had to run into town and run him back home now. But anyhow, just, I've just asked my mom, just can you please call in the afternoon when I'm not doing the, the grind thing? And then it's easier for me to listen and have a conversation and um, she just won't. She won't call in the afternoon, even though she can. She still works a little bit, but she's mostly retired. She still cleans homes and, and makes the wreaths. So she's mostly on her own schedule. But she's home plenty in the afternoon, so she could call me then. And But she just won't. She always wants to make a point to call in the morning. And in recent years, just something that she loves to call about in the morning is the latest video she watched online about how this celebrity died from the the assumption is the jab. So, you know, like this morning, she had to call me this morning, and I always pick up because it's my mom. Well, I don't always pick up. Sometimes I don't. But, you know, a lot of times I can just listen to her, let her, let her get it all out, because I know she needs someone to talk to. But, I, again, she loves to call and, and talk about the latest video she watched that said this person – died from the jab. So I always say to her, I say, well, you know, mom, I, I've been documenting these celebrity deaths for a long time and the perfect rituals that continue to unfold. So I said, I mean, do you think it's the, the jab that's now doing it when this was going on before the jab? And you know, she called about OJ this morning. So I said, you know, did you see my video on OJ, how they announced his death at the Masters and the last time he was seen in the world and social media was the day of the Super Bowl and he was wearing the Titleist hat talking about how he can't wait to get back to golfing. And then he's announced dead as the Masters begin. And then, again, like I've always taught about how 76, his age of death, is connected to Black History Month being recognized by the feds in 76. And how the word slave equals 76, like the word master. And how important that number was to Obama's presidency in his recent movie. Not to mention we warned about O.J. Simpson in this past February being 76 and being from San Francisco. And what happened to Carl Weathers at age 76 on the first, first day of Black History Month? But anyway, so I bring that up to her and she's like, well, I mean, like, all that's just really hard to understand. And it's just like, uh, again, we know that jab is killing people. And, uh, you know, it's it's like I don't mind the questioning sentiment. It's just she knows that I'm doing my research and my work and what I have to do for, for people who support the Patreon in the morning every day. And she wants to call at that time when I've told her for years that that's when I'm doing the work. If you could just call later in the day. And she never wants to give my work any respect while always pointing to these other researchers and how I need to watch that video. Like today I got to watch the video on how OJ died from the jab. It's like, I kind of feel like my research kind of already shows that's not what happened unless, again, these are just like a gazillion to one coincidences that just keep landing perfectly every time. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just like, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like she's doing this just to share the video. It feels like she's doing this purposely because she knows it annoys me. And, you know, and then it's just like, I don't know, instead of her being like, okay, okay, I'll call from now on after one, you know, she's like, can't you just listen to me? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I can, but well, why, why can't I listen to you after one when I'm not trying to focus and do something? And not seemingly be pur purposely triggered by my mother almost every day. And, uh, you know, I just, 
anyway, I mean, this has been a lifelong struggle. I've always felt like my mom is trying to just like go out of her way to make me mad, but also others. And, and there's no doubt about it that she does this. So what do you do when this is your own mother? Do you just say, like what sweet lady always says to Zach, just block her number and never pick it up again. I say, I can't do that. It's my mom. And then I, I said, like, would you ever do that? To, she, and then when I always put in the context of her mom, she gets, I'm like, it's my mom, you know, like. I can't just block my mom forever and ignore my mom. My mom might need to call me. What, and that's part of the reason I pick up the phone every day, too. My mom is getting older and she's alone. And I know she likes to get up on ladders and dust the, the two specks of dust up on the light that no one's looking at. I tell her to stop doing stuff like that. I'm like, Mom, I just feel like you're playing with your life. Did you? Is it really that important to get up there where no one can even see and dust when you're all alone with the, the wobbly ladder? So, you know, I, that's why I pick up the phone. Because I, I just never noticed the day that she fell off the ladder or she needs me to fly home. Because it could be this, but every day I pick up just in case, and, and it's just like, okay, she's just trying to piss me off again today. So yeah, it's like, what what do you do? Understand, I'm age 40, right? I've been going through this struggle with my mom for all of my life, but for all of my adult life, and for all of my adult life, I've been like, okay, I want the next conversation with my mother to be a, a very positive, great conversation. And... <laughs> it's, it's like I, I want something that I don't think is possible because my mom's not really good at conversing. She's good at talking. It, it, to make a point, just a few days ago when she called, here's a real line my mom gave to me. The other morning she called, and I'm doing my like through the whole time I'm doing my work, she's calling and talking to me and telling me about you know the latest uh, Dell Big Tree RFK Junior campaign uh, video that this celebrity died from this jam and. She, she was just talking for the longest time, right? And probably just over two hours in, and I haven't, I, I might have said, yeah, okay, yes, I okay, get it. You know, I might have had a few words in over this two hours that she's been talking. And finally, I make it clear that I want to make a point about something she just said. And I've said, okay, hold on. I got to that. She wants to keep talking. I'm saying, Mom, hold on one second. Just let me say something about that last thing you said. And then I start to make the point, and maybe I got four sentences to say, and I'm two sentences in, and then she just starts talking over me. I go, Mom, how come I can't even talk for like 20 seconds when you've been talking for two hours? And you know what she said back to me, guys? She said, I just watched your YouTube video, and it was like an hour and a half, so I just listened to you for an hour and a half. And I said, well, you're not. I said, hold on. You didn't call about that YouTube video. You haven't responded to one point about it in the two hours you've been talking, so how do I know that? But also, Mom, you're watching a video of mine? So because you watch the video of mine, you can't let me respond to something you're saying for even 20. And then she, I, it's like I can't finish a single set. I can't even get that much out. She just starts talking over me again. So, I mean, this is how it's been my whole life. And it's like, God. And then anytime I say, Mom, why, what? I said, Mom, do you understand how this constantly makes me feel my whole life that I can't even, like, talk to you? I, I can't, like, get out words without being talked over. <laughs> and, then and then she'll always say, like, why are you yelling? And I was like, I mean, are you being real, mom? Are you being real? Like, you're talking very loud over me because you can't let me finish after I just listened to you for two hours. And now you're asking me why I'm yelling? God, it's just like, oh, my God, this person, man. But literally, you guys, I mean, she comes from a family of nine children. She's the, She refers to herself as the black sheep of the family because none of the other siblings get along with her. But seemingly the other siblings... A lot of them do get along. They all, they, again, I, I think too many children and not enough attention growing up in that household. But, um, yeah, it's just like I, I just see the pattern now. It's like, well, from the time I was a child, you were the enemy of your siblings. <laughs> You've been the enemy of my father. Oh, it's just, you know, it's just every time I talk. And, and that's the other thing that always happens. When I try to, like, ask her to stop doing something or why, then she'll always just snap into her other argument. Like, how come you support your father more than me? And I'm like, well, I don't think that's true, Mom. But, uh, again, I said the one thing that's different about you and Dad is over the years, like, Dad has learned to to listen. Like, for example, Dad knows not to call me until in the afternoon when I'm free. And, uh, again, he respects that. He, he understands that I'm, I'm working and trying to focus, and he doesn't want to disrupt that. seems like you perp – I mean, that's the difference between uh, – but then she doesn't listen to that. Then she just calls back the next day at 9 a.m. to do the exact same thing over again. You know? It's just like, oh, my God. And like, But every day, you guys, it's like Groundhog's Day. And then I feel like a dumbass every day. 
I'm like, yeah, sweet lady's right. Just block the phone number and don't deal with this anymore. But then I'm like, I can't block my mother. That's unethical. God, it's just like, it's the worst Pandora's box. But yeah, okay, here's ultimately the point of me saying this. I'm 40 years old, right? I still haven't figured out how to resolve this because it, it literally is like Mission Impossible. And the thing that I really do fail at that I could improve in in this regard is just like not getting mad and not yelling when my mom calls me. It's just like, okay, put your game face on. You know what this is going to be like. Just deal with it because this is what your mother has to do every day. The less you talk, the better. Just let her go on for two hours until somebody else calls her and she has to get off the phone. I mean, that's usually how it ends, too. Like, if I just sit there and listen all the time, she usually doesn't stop talking until she gets another phone call and has to take care of something. It's just like... But yeah, again, here's the point I'm making. For younger people who watch this, because my demographics mostly are younger people... You really should try and get along with your parents to the best of your ability because they are your parents, they're your blood. You wouldn't be in the world without them. But at the same time, I don't think it's true that you have to respect and do every last thing your parents says you need to do. I followed a lot of my mom's instructions when I was younger because she was my mom, and I have a lot of lifelong regrets. And I look back and it's not like I feel like I would have been doing the wrong thing had I done what I wanted to do. I feel like a lot of times I listen... I, I think about how I, I, I did what my mom wanted me to do because she simply wanted me to do that. And I think, God, I missed out on a huge opportunity. That was a mistake to end that. That was a mistake to not do that. And again, your parents do mean the best, so you should try to serve them well. A lot of times your parents don't you want you to do things because they are trying to protect you from something that is bad. So you, you have to really use your mind, but... Uh, again, it's it's like, um, yeah, I mean, you, you might have a parent who was born into this messed up world and they were messed up as a child by their parents. And then, you know, they did their best as parents, but they learned a lot of messed up things from who parented them. And then that carried out. It's just like an endless cycle. And it's, it's why you see as society goes on. Uh, again, just to rewind. You know, Martin Luther King Jr., he gave that speech a year to the day of his death. He said, like, the men who come back from war, they bring these evils into their family. My mom's father, you know, he was in the, like, so many people from that generation. He was in the wars. He was in the Korean War. He got a bullet in his leg in the Korean War that never got taken out. And I never understood if he kept it in there as, like, some kind of tough guy thing or if it couldn't be taken out because it would fracture his bone. I I never understood that, but, uh, again was in the war, was in the combat, and I I just wonder, I just wonder, like, I remember as a child, he wasn't the nicest guy, he was very stern and rigid, and uh, he died when I was was quite young, but I I just think, like, maybe that that was it, just he brought back all that angst and stuff, and it's in the children, and the children got this negative vibration in them, and it just... And then they have children, and then it has some of the negative vibration in, and it's just... But yeah, just so many families are just so dysfunctional. And yeah, I don't, I don't come from anything different. You know, I, I thought it was normal to have your parents screaming at each other every day. Because that's what I grew up with. So I just thought that was normal. I remember I, I got a good friend when I was growing up. And I went over and I just saw how his, how his parents were always so sweet to each other. And so happy and just having a good time. And I just thought, whoa, this is way different. This is, uh, wow, these people actually like each other. You know, and... Um, yeah, it's just amazing how, you know, as a child, you're just so adaptive. And I mean, that's the thing about us as people. We are resilient and and we really can't adapt to things. And, but yeah, some of the stuff we adapt to, we also then learn behaviors that are, that are not good. And Yeah, I just, I, I don't know what to do as, as a 40-year-old man who has a 70-some-year-old mother who just, it's the same dynamic every time and. It's like, how do I, but yeah, and then I, when I do videos like this, people will leave comments, they'll be like, that's exactly how my mom is. And again, it's, a, it's something that's learned from society. It's like, how did people end up this way? Again, my parents' generation are the ones born in the early 50s, baby boomers right after the wars, a lot of new technology, a lot of new, just, again, really 
zooming into uh, the industrial industrialized world after the world wars. First generation raised in front of the TV. And, and, and in a way, I do think about that, just raised in front of the TV, because it's like a one-way conversation where the other person is just the spectator, just taking it all in. You're not talking back, but you're getting all this information. It's like when my mom communicates, she just wants to do all the talking and doesn't feel like anyone else has anything else worthy of saying. But... Um, yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's just the stuff we have to deal with, you guys. And 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 the point the point I also want to make is, I mean, like this thing with my mom, it is a, a just a major sore in my life and has been, and it just like wears on you because you want it to get better, but it doesn't get better seemingly because somebody just wants to keep doing the same thing. And uh, again, sometimes you have these people in your life that really wear you down. I guess that's the other point I'm trying to make is even if you do have that in your life, you cannot let these things, I mean, yeah, we are human and, and everything does take a toll on energy, but you just can't let these types of people like ruin your life and wear you down and keep you from doing the things you want to do, the things you need to do. And, and to make a point, you know, the one time I would finally get older, the one time I like really defied my mom's orders was with this research. My mom really thought I needed to shut this down when I first started because she thought I sounded mental. She wasn't as bad as my sister, but she had my sister in my ear about how mental I was, how I needed to be locked up for teaching about what I've been teaching about the last 10 years, this code of letters and numbers, which has proven itself in spades. But, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, and I said, oh, I said, I'm not wrong about this, mom. There's something going on here. This needs to be researched and explored and understood. And, you know, the one thing at the end of the day, why my mom also doesn't want to, you know, latch onto this research is it's constantly conflicting with the things she believes. I was showing her how Bernie Sanders was part of this sick cabal. You guys remember that death of that Bernie baby back in 2016? I was showing how perfectly synced that was with Bernie Sanders. She didn't want to accept that. Now she doesn't want to see through her beloved RFK Jr., Again, uh, it's easier to believe than to um, do anything else. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I just had to rant. But yeah, if you're having problems with your family, I don't think you should give up on them. But maybe, like, don't let them trigger you. That's, that's what I have to work out for the, for the remainder of my life is just stop letting my mom trigger me every morning. So anyhow, we'll leave it there, Truth Seeker. And, yeah, I will be back later today for a normal stream. But, yeah, I just, I just got a fit, man. My mom just driving me nuts. All right.